Hello everyone. In this lecture, we are going to discuss a new topic that is mechanical properties from unit number two. So we'll start with the basics, fundamentals of what is the meaning of properties. These topics are very important for MCQs because many questions are dependent on the properties of material and accordingly on applications. So the fundamental is properties of material. So what is the basic meaning of properties? Property is nothing but the behavior of material under the external forces that means how particular material behaves when we are going to apply some force on that material so first are uh, basic the natures of different forces so as you can see in this diagram the first diagram indicates the tensile force second is compressive force third one is bending so here you can observe when the forces are applied at this point here and this is support so the shaft may flex or bend like this that is bending force shear force this is the direction of shear force next torsion torsion it is like this equal and opposite rotational force or that is basically i can call the torsion or the twist so this basic natures of forces are required to know for mechanical properties Then, after this, we'll discuss basics that is required for stress strain diagram, which you learnt in 12th physics. A stress strain diagram for ductile and brittle material. So, in this lecture, we'll be focusing on the material properties. So, first, basic definition of a stress. So, what is a stress basically? Stress is nothing but internal force or internal resistance offered by the material. So that I can say internal resistance offered by material per unit cross-sectional area. So that stress is equals to sigma is equals to F by A. And of course unit will be Newton per meter square which can be represented as a Pascal. Whereas F is the applied force load Newton cross-sectional area. And uh, next definition will be strain which is equals to change in length upon original length so I can say it is a dimensionless unitless term because length by length so same unit next the new term which is we are going to introduce here that is a stress divided by strain that is called as modulus of elasticity or Young's modulus so I can say the stress sigma is directly proportional to the strain and that constant of proportionality is represented by letter E which is called as Young's modulus or modulus of elasticity so accordingly I can define this here the stress by strain sigma by epsilon as modulus of elasticity this is important as represented in Hooke's law because this is a sentence or the statement of Hooke's law Hooke's law state that in proportional limit the stress is directly proportional to the strength and that constant of proportionality E capital E which is represented as modulus of elasticity then with this basics we'll discuss the different mechanical properties of metals or materials so different materials property first basic is strength so what is a strength? Strength is nothing but ability to resist the stresses without failure. So remember these two words which are very important. Resist the stress without, without failure. Without failure, ability to resist the stresses. That strength. When the load is static, it is called as a static strength. When the load is static, it is called as static strength. The second is fatigue load or fatigue strength when the load is varying with respect to magnitude as well as direction or either or that is represented as fatigue alternating fluctuating or cyclic load so here you can see this diagram the load is changing with respect to the time parameter here on this axis so I can see this is a fatigue loading so the component which are subjected to fatigue loads are very important shaft gears bearing axles and the frames they are subjected to fatigue load so when the magnitude and the direction of the load is changing with respect to time we call this as a fatigue strength and these are the examples of fatigue strength components 
next properties which you learned as a basics first one is elasticity so the elasticity is the property of material to regain means to get back its dimension when the load is removed so basic first property which we can call as elasticity so ability to regain back original dimension when the load is removed so that's the important line highlight as a definition of elasticity the steel is more elastic than rubber and this elasticity property is very useful in case of the fatigue loading of the components next opposite to the elasticity property is a plasticity and meaning of elasticity opposite to it so in elasticity material regain the dimension in plasticity it retains means it maintains the continuous deformation so that means even the load is removed it gets object or the material is subjected to permanent deformation so in one line plasticity permanent deformation even the load is removed so that deformation means change in size shape and uh, dimension of material next is ductility now what is ductility ductility is a property which drawn into wires which i can represent as, as elongation so property which drawn into wires of course this ductility property hence is very useful in case of wire formation wire drawing applications so elongation when i am saying elongation is greater than 5% this then i can call this material as ductile material so when elongation percentage elongation is more than 5% i should call this particular material as a ductile opposite to ductile and even one more important thing opposite to ductile property is a brittleness when the material is sudden means ability of material to break or to rupture with the very small deformation that is called as brittleness so little deformation which is of course i can say less than 5% is called as brittleness so ability to rupture with the little bit deformation that is brittleness example cast iron ductility of course decreases with the increase in temperature so logical when temperature increases the ability to form a wires at high temperature decreases these are the example steel copper and aluminum with this diagram you can identify in a ductile material there will be the neck formation and deformation takes place called as a yielding whereas in brittle material it directly breaks without any deformation so the next property malleability so which you learned as a basics malleability to form a thin sheets under the compressive force so very important you should write this as under the compressive force or hammering action change in the size and shape or to form the sheets without rupture it's called as malleability so malleability to form a thin sheet under compressive force it's called as malleability and this is very important in case of sheet formation the next is hardness hardness is ability to cut penetrate or to scratch other uh, soft material so of course by the basic definition of ability to cut and scratch other softer material so it is very useful in case of cutting tool applications then next question may arise how the hardness is measured it is it is absolutely it's not a basic unit so there are different methods and techniques are used how that hardness is measured so brinell hardness number and rockwell hardness number we'll be discussing this in detail later on so bhn rockwell and weekers these are three scientific methods and numbers are available to measure the hardness next is property which is very important called as toughness so the total capacity so very important here you can read the ability of or the capacity of material to absorb energy without failure so before the component or material fail the total energy absorbed by material is called as toughness so that's why the toughness is useful or it is ability to withstand shocks and impact loads so if the material is more tougher it absorbs more shocks and impact load without failure and that is the basic property of toughness so we need a tougher material when the objects are subjected to impact loads 
Now, next question may arise: What is the meaning of total energy absorbed by material? The total energy absorbed by material that means simply the energy absorbed in the elastic as well as plastic deformation range in a stress-strain diagram. More the elongation and deformation, more will be the toughness for material, which we'll discuss once again in a stress-strain diagram. Then with this basic property, next very important term which you are going to learn is resilience and the creep, which is something new and slight modification in the toughness property. We say toughness is the ability or capacity of material to absorb energy without failure. Whereas here we say resilience again the energy absorbed by material not before to fail it is in the elastic range so that's a drastic change in the definitions or little bit change in the definitions of here you can say energy absorbed in the elastic range that is elastic strain energy it's called as a resilience and hence this property is very useful in case of spring because we know that the energy absorbed by in elastic range this property is a basic function of the spring so resilience property is very important for spring last one creep so what is creep creep is the basic property of high temperature devices or materials so i can say creep is the progressive deformation at constant load so when i say constant load that simply means that load it may be stress it may be pressure or it may be force of course at high temperature so this property is called as a creep. So progressive deformation at constant load at high temperature is called as a creep. Hence it is useful in case of boilers, turbines and furnace. So creep is a function of all these parameters that is as load indicates pressure, stress as well as temperature and the material pro materials as well as time. Because it is a time dependent property. Hence the creep property we need to consider for boilers, turbines and furnace applications. So with this we had all the basics of properties of material which we learned basics from the stress strain diagrams. So what is a basically stress strain diagram indicates? When any material is subjected to loading means you are applying force on that particular material. How it behaves for ductile and brittle material this we are going to discuss. So here you can observe the two curves, one is for brittle material and one is for ductile one, which simply indicates brittle material does not show any kind of deformation before it fails or it is little bit deformation, whereas ductile material shows a deformation because on this axis we have a strain on x axis which is called as change in length upon original length. So here I can say a lot of deformation for ductile material. So this diagram indicates a stress strain curve for ductile as well as brittle material. So similarly, we'll be discussing few topics how exactly this curve is formed. So let us consider this rod, cylindrical or um, circular cross section shaft kind of materials is used and it is subjected to loading means tensile force is applied and then this range initial phase this curve is called as stress strain curve where I can say the different limits so this is a linear area where the stress is directly proportional to strain and that is I can say Hooke's law in the proportional limit and this point we obtain that is elastic range once you get after this a permanent deformation so hence this area is called as a plastic or plasticity region and finally the component fails or breakage of the component takes place next one again and in detail the stress strain curve for ductile as a steel material so here you can see a loading of a material ductile material for let's say for steel how it behaves so let us consider the first region up to this point is here the hooks like applicable that is in proportional range then this point is elastic range then it is yielding means after elastic when you are going to increase the load there will be permanent deformation and hence henceforth the component is subjected to plastic region this is ultimate point 
E point is ultimate point which is subjected to highest stress in the component then after even there will be elongation but stresses are slightly reduced and component will fail so finally we get the point that is F fracture point or breaking point so the total region first proportional then we have elastic point and this property is a resilience property then we have yielding ultimate and final fracture the total energy absorbed by material before failure is called as toughness the total area will be toughness and only in the elastic range that is resilience so this is very important for MCQ exam because where you need to identify a lot of questions and to solve logical question on the stress strain diagram I hope this is useful for understanding of stress strain curve as well as property of material thank you